Uh, so first off, what is the App Builder and what's its purpose? Uh, well, uh, if, if you weren't aware, the App Builder is actually an Apex application. So um, the Apex team uses Apex uh, to build the builder. So uh, problems that they encounter, uh, kind of building applications and shortcomings that they identify while trying to put together the builder, um, kind of gives them insight into how to try to make the builder better. Um, but the builder is kind of where we spend most of our time as a, an Apex developer. Uh, we spend probably some time in like SQL developer or, you know, some uh, database tool creating PL SQL packages and stuff. But when it comes to truly building Apex applications, you got to do it in the builder. Uh, and we use that to modify that data, that metadata that I was talking about before, um, because there's no files. Uh, I can't just open an editor and start changing some flat files or some XML files or some JSON files to configure things for Apex. I need an application that's running to modify metadata. And that's what the builder uh, tries to satisfy. Um, and I think with all, as, uh, with all technology, uh, the first iteration probably isn't the best version because uh, it's the first iteration. You're still learning how these things work. So um, this is the uh, page designer uh, that I cut my teeth on, uh, learning Apex. I've built several applications using this and it worked really well. Um, you can see that we have our page rendering side, our page processing, as well as the different shared components. And um, the one thing that we don't see here uh, are there are no properties. There's nothing for us to actually change or edit here. This is essentially a really complex report. That's it. Um, and it's a report with a whole bunch of links that we can click on, which will take us to a place to go edit that, edit a component. Um, and since we spend all of our time here, having to constantly leave and come back, um, that's kind of inefficient. Uh, the uh, next major overhaul to the builder uh, made it look better, but it still didn't solve this core problem. But we could see that uh, it did, in Apex 4, it did introduce a tree view, uh, which was the, the kind of like the first way for us to um, kind of get some sort of hierarchy or feel for how the page is going to be processed. Uh, and then finally, kind of in the la latest re uh, releases of the builder, um, here you can see it kind of defaults to this tree view. We have some sort of visual layout that we can work on. Um, as well as properties over here on the right hand side that we can modify. So um, with this with this change, uh, we're able to stay on one page, modify components that are pertinent to this page uh, without really having to leave. Uh, but also with that major overhaul and major improvement, there's a lot of features here that are kind of hidden that you might not be aware of. So let's go ahead and let's explore some of those features together. Um, the first one isn't necessarily a feature of the builder as, uh, or a, a, a feature of that page designer that we were just looking at. Um, it's more just a feature of Apex at large. And, and the first thing I'd say is um, you want to uh, set all your defaults and, and uh, however you want your applications and your development experience to kind of initialize uh, to kind of how you want things to happen. Uh, and uh, the three big things here for me uh, is you can set your date format uh, for when you're querying things in SQL commands. I, I think it's absolutely a requirement to make sure that um, dates include time when you query them. Uh, I've, so many bugs have, have uh, uh, an data anomalies have been solved by just making sure that you can see the time that's associated with the dates. So we'll talk about that. Uh, especially now because more people are working remote set your picture let your uh coworkers uh see see your face um and i think it just kind of brings uh it just brings everyone a little bit closer on your development team um and the other setting that i've kind of played around with is you can adjust exactly how your applications open so um when you try to run an application uh, it will open in a new tab or a, a new window depending how you have your browser configured um, but um, there, you have a little bit more control in exactly how that new tab opens or 
where that tab opens and we'll look at that. So let's go explore that. Uh, so in the upper right hand corner, you have your management for your profile. Uh, and I think it's very important you come in here and say edit profile uh, and set your photo. Easy, very easy to do. Um, and you can also set your first name uh, and your last name. I think those are very small things. They seem inconsequential, um, but I think it really helps just bring the team together. And the other thing that I'll say is that notice how this just kind of says Tyson in the upper right hand corner. Um, if you have m that data, uh, Apex will use it to better present things on the screen. So it just helps make your application look a little bit nicer. Uh, the other part that I want to talk about here, though, is preferences. And this kind of impacts how exactly Apex um, uh, will behave. Now, of course, there's dark mode here. We can toggle light mode or dark mode. So when I say dark mode, it's going to take a second. It's going to refresh. Um, and then now I'm using Apex in dark mode. Um, I don't particularly uh, like dark mode. Um, I do a lot of presentations, and I find that um, it can be hard to uh, presents lots of information uh, in dark mode. So for that reason, um, I actually tend to stick with uh, light mode. But if I am doing a lot of development at night, then sure, uh, dark mode can be helpful. I will, I will toggle that on occasion. But the preferences that I want to look at here uh, are this one, this one right here, the date, uh, default date format. Just make sure that you include time. And now when I go to SQL commands and I query anything, every date is going to include time. Easy solve. Um, this defaults to yes, which is run application in new window. That's the default. So when I try to run an application, it will run in a brand new window. If for some reason you don't like that behavior, um, you want to be constantly uh, be you know replacing this one window, um, you can just turn that off. Um, I really think that running your application in a new window is is a um, fantastic. It's so helpful. I have two monitors. So I have my builder up on one screen, my application up on the other, uh, and I have those two separate views, um, you know, how to edit my application, how to view it. I think absolutely that is like the premier way to be editing your applications. Um, but one option that uh, usually, or that defaults to off, um, is use a single window to run all applications. And this is a subtle nuance here, but um, when I click my run button here, you can see that I'm in my sample database application. It comes up and it comes up in this one tab. If I go to a different application though, so I'm gonna just go all the way back up to my app builder. I'm just gonna pick any application. We'll just pick this sample app here and I'll say run. Notice that it runs in this exact same tab. So um, if you are editing few applications generally, um, or maybe if you're editing if you if you're bouncing between you know 10 or 20 different applications all the time fixing little things it can be beneficial to have everything open up in the same tab um, i have had situations before uh, where when these are opening up in new windows i just at the end of the day i'm just like oh my gosh i have 20 windows of apex open let me close these things down um, having them open all in the same window might be beneficial or it might not. That's kind of one thing that you need to work out. Uh, but for the duration of this class, I'm going to have them open in the same window um, because I, I don't want to uh, be toggling uh, that back and forth. So let me go back to my sample database application, say run, um, run, and then it should take me back. Cool. Uh, spotlight search. If you're not using it, you are seriously missing out. Um, Spotlight Search uh, allows you to quickly navigate around your application, um, and it lets you just find things. Uh, you want to see where an item is being referenced on several different pages. Uh, you want to navigate to a new page. Uh, you want to go edit an authorization scheme, and you want to quickly go view all of your authorization schemes. Spotlight Search can help you do all of that stuff. Um, uh, it is context sensitive, so depending on where you are, in your application, it might behave slightly differently. So um, if you're on a page, uh, you might get slightly different options than if you're just at the very top level, just in the at the home page of, of Apex, um, you might see different uh, options become available. Uh, there is a shortcut to open it, which is control quote, 
And I'll go ahead and show you this now. Uh, to be clear, Spotlight Search does not impact the application that you are in. Uh, this is uh, definitely something that happens in the builder. So uh, I'm kind of interested in the sample database application, you know, page one. So let's, if I do control quote, and if I type one, I can actually see that it opens up um, everything that has a one in it. Uh, so that might not actually be uh, helpful. But if I try to type the page name, like sample database, oh, actually, it's already pulling up. Uh, sample database application page one. And I actually, I don't have to use my mouse. I can use my arrow keys. Uh, and then I'll just go ahead uh, and uh, press enter. And that should take me to page one. Uh, when I'm on page one and, and uh, you know, there might be an item or a region or something that I'm looking for, uh, you know, I'll control quote to bring it up. Um, and I'll search dashboard. And there's a region on this page that's dashboard. So I'll press enter and it takes me directly to that region. Hey, so that's kind of cool. So I can kind of, um, if I have a really big page with a lot of stuff on it, and I'm looking for a, an item, um, or let's do a, what P1 this month. So if I control quote and I do month, I can see, ah, P1 this month, that's what I'm looking for. Where is that? Enter, and it takes me right there to that item to change its properties. That's fantastic. So please, oh, and I guess the last use case that I want to show you um, is if I'm on this page and I want to go edit some authorization, um, I could uh, control quote, type off, and I can see that um, it actually takes me uh, to, uh, there's authentication and authorization schemes, so I can kind of navigate to those. Um, uh, but, you know, I want to deal with, you know, some authorization schemes, so I'll press enter, uh, and then I'll go off and, and see this authorization scheme that I can go edit and play with. Um, another quick tip just about the builder, if you ever want to go back to the last page that you were editing, um, you can just uh, click on that little button there. That'll take you back to the last page. I use that all of the time. Okay, so those are some general kind of use case, uh, useful things um, that can help just solve some navigational issues. Uh, with Apex. But I want to take a second, I want to focus on this render uh, region over here on the left. There are several different ways that you can view this. Um, so there's the processing view, which is what I'm currently using, and that's the default. You can see it's selected here, just on top of the tree node. Um, if you really like that old view of Apex, um, that component view, and I find there are several developers that love that component view, and that's great, that's fine. Um, you can kind of get the best of both worlds if you click group by component type. This should feel very, uh, should be a comfortable place for you in that um, group by component type will put we'll make all these nodes for all the different types. There's a node for region, for button, for page items, for computations, processes, and branches. Uh, and that's kind of what, what, how we, we're used to viewing this information in Apex, uh, if you've been working with Apex for a while. Uh, the one thing that I will say that um, I don't like about the component type view is that you lose the processing order the order in which things are going to happen. And I think that's already something that's a little bit confusing for Apex developers, especially new developers. It's not like a normal block of code that you can just look at the block of code and see the order in which things are going to happen. So um, by grouping by component type, you lose the uh, order of operations. So for that reason, I still like using the processing view. Uh, occasionally, if we're very, very large pages, I might swap over to component type if I need to, but my default standard operating procedure is processing view.